we're going to bring up our first speaker, Andrea. Andrea is a freelance web developer and is going to talk to us about um, the directory of developer tools that she made with Sanity. So let's bring her to the stage. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea. Hello. How are you? I'm a bit nervous, to be honest. <laughs> Oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's We're all new. I think everybody feels the same at the beginning. Yes. The first I'm... maybe two, three minutes, and then it's like. And then it's fine. Okay. It'll be yeah, totally yeah, fine. It's, yeah, it's yeah. great. I'm super excited to hear your talk. It's totally normal to be nervous. I'm nervous all the time, and I do this all the time. <laughs> so it just means you're excited about it, right? Yeah, yeah I am, actually. Excellent. Um, so are you ready to share screen? Yes. Okay, so let's do that. All right, so I'm gonna turn it over to Andrea. Um, good luck. Um, I'm really okay. excited to hear your talk. Me too. <laughs> All, right, All right, bye. Bye. Okay, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Andrea, as you've heard, and I'm coming to you from Berlin, Germany. Uh, I would like to talk to you a bit about my background, first of all. So uh, in 2020, I moved to Berlin and because of the pandemic, I decided to pivot and change careers from uh, my boring office job to web development and working from home. Um, it was an interesting transition to say the least, a bit challenging at times, but uh, very fulfilling. Uh, now I am a freelance web developer and tech content creator. And of course, I also build side projects like every other developer. Um, so one of these projects came about from my personal pain. Uh, and I'm sure that there are many devs in the same situation as I was. Um, we basically like to bookmark every single tool that we come across just in case we ever need it for future projects. And I've been in situations on many occasions where I had to look through my bookmarks, find a tool and I knew I had saved to use for a project. As you can see, the list uh, of projects on my Google bookmarks is a mile long. You don't have to see the one I have on Twitter. It's equally long. Uh, so that turned quickly into a frustrating and quite unproductive exercise every single time I started building a project. Not to mention that I personally have a list of this kind of uh, bookmarks everywhere, even LinkedIn. You cannot imagine a pain. <laughs> so I decided to build myself a little directory and organize all these saved bookmarks into categories for ease of access. Let's just say that. Um, I started a little bit working uh, on a prototype of the website and I wanted it to be bold and show that it is intended to be used by front-end uh, developers. As you can see, I think that goal, goal has been achieved. It is uh, quite a bold visual. <laughs> um, also a little side note here, although relevant, I am part of the tech Twitter community and developers uh, on there love to build their projects in public. So I decided to follow suit and join the movement because I don't know about other developers, but when I start the project, I sometimes take either forever to finish it or never finish it. So I said, okay, this will keep me accountable. So I also was able to receive validation from my, for my project uh, from my peers. And also I was uh, able to keep focused and committed working on it. Um, Many of my peers there have shown interest in using uh, the directory and also started sharing their favorite tools to be featured uh, on the website. That was pretty exciting to me. Uh, I love that people were so into it. <laughs> I honestly did not expect that. Um, but this brought on a problem that I didn't really think about when uh, the project was just intended for me, my personal use, which was um, how do I manage the content, the data? What options do I have? Because I was planning, or I'm still planning, to grow this project quite big. And I, I couldn't imagine what I, 
I was I I, ha I was able to to uh, use to store all this information. Um, so I needed something that if the project grew with time, it will help with the uh, scalability. Um, again, I took these questions to Twitter and someone recommended to look into headless CMSs. Um, I've heard a bit about headless CMSs. I was not really aware uh, of this, uh, only of the traditional CMS WordPress. Um, they also gave me a few examples of such tools, one of which was uh, Sanity. The way that I choose uh, a service, a tool, a framework, and so on, is by looking at first at their documentation. And I have to admit, I don't usually read the documentation at the beginning. I like to try things out by myself. Um, I know that's not a good uh, strategy, but I want to know that if I have questions, there are answers. So I don't get stuck uh, with my project. I never finish it. So I did my research on all the recommendations and I decided to give Sanity a go because I realized it has good documentation. It seemed pretty easy to use. Um, it had a user interface, was, which was a plus plus for me because I'm a pretty visual person and I wanted to to see what I'm doing at the, on the back end. Um, it had the ability to organize and store all my data. I didn't want to use different tools to do this. And also it has a great community support. Um, so <clears throat> because this was my first project using uh, Sanity IO, I only focused on uh, storing the tools, information and the blog data so that I have a working MVP. I wanted to, to, to finish the project quickly. And I also, <laughs> I was thinking, uh, make it work and then make it better. Um, so as the project grows, and I'm hoping it's going to grow, uh, refactoring the code and uh, moving all the content to sanity will be probably necessary. Um, so what you see on the screen right now is, of course, the front end of DevTooly. Um, this is uh, where we, where I am at with uh, the development. A side note, uh, DevTooly is not yet finished, probably in the next two weeks or so. Uh, I will have deployed the final version. But um, yeah, let's go in the back end to see the Sunny Studio. Uh, as you can see, the UI is uh, clean and simple, but obviously can be customized as it is built on top of React. Um, so I pulled here uh, one of the schemas for the CSS categories, um, collections, whatever you want to call it, um, <clears throat> where I save all the um, tools related to CSS, basically. Um, so I call this a child schema. I don't know if this is <laughs> an official name for it, but this is how I call it. So this schema basically is uh, a boilerplate schema that I use for all the categories that I am creating on the website, like, such as backgrounds, uh, Chrome extensions, colors, the icons, and so on. And this child schema is important in the par parent schema. Um, basically, all the schemas are important in, imported in this parent schema, schema JS file. And as you can see, uh, in the in this little video, um, all the fields that you see in the schema are shown in the in in each um, card CSS um, fields uh, where you can import your uh, data, and this is uh, rendered on the front end. It's fairly simple and I'm going to probably keep it like this because I only need uh, to show the links, the images, the logo, uh, if there is a logo or and a little excerpt description of the um, of the tool. Um, OK, so this was um, the schema project uh, for the 
that was the schema for the project uh, section of the Stanley Studio. Now let's go to the blog schemas. Um, here I have three child schemas. Um, these are a little bit, I wouldn't call them complex, but um, they are free <laughs> compared to the previous uh, section. So I have a post schema, a category schema, and an author schema. So the author schema uh, will basically show uh, the image of the author, the, the date that uh, the blog post was published, as well as the name of the author. Uh, this will be rendered on each blog post. And then we also have a category. So for example, we have a few categories on uh, our blog post. For example, we're talking about React, we're talking about CSS, we're talking about color, whatever. So we will create categories in the Sanity Studio for, for each uh, blog post that we are talking about on this subject. So whatever you are uh, writing a blog post uh, in the Sanity Studio about React, you will choose uh, the React category. And this will be shown on the blog post on the front end. Um, <clears throat> On the post schema, this looks, I wouldn't say complex necessarily, but it looks <laughs> a lot of information, like a lot of information. Uh, it is not really, but um, it shows all the information that I need right now, to which I will probably add in the future more. Uh, so uh, I have fields for the title, for the blog post, for the blog content text uh images probably in the future i will have i will add uh, uh blocks for the code as well uh the date that it was published the author and everything so this author is imported from the previous schema the author schema so all these three schemas the children's schemas are imported of course in the parent schema as i said earlier um Okay, so moving on. Would I choose Sanity again for my next project? Definitely, yes. I actually am using it on a second project. And uh, because I already have experience from the previous uh, project, I it feels familiar. It is also so much easier for me now to, to, to work on it. Um, my logic is... Um, more clear, let's say. Um, so yes, definitely, yes. Uh, what would I do differently? Probably learn Grok in depth because um, honestly, I never heard of it before. I never used it. I never had to use it, which was, um, I wouldn't call it a learning curve, but it was, it was a little bit uh, of getting used to it at the beginning. So I would say just at least get the basic uh, concepts and you will be good. And I will also uh, define my project goals. Yes, I know uh, on the first uh, project is a bit difficult to do that because you're still trying the sanity. You are still trying it and uh, you don't know what is it about at the beginning. But on the second project, it's a good idea to, to define your project goals. Uh, do, do I recommend it? Definitely, yes. Again, uh, first of all, uh, there's a great community. Um, there is a lot of information about it. Uh, they also have um, great uh, documentation. Uh, a lot of people are using it. So a lot of uh, blog posts are written about it, how to do different things and how to do them in a better way, let's say. Um, yeah, and I think that's it. That was a quick one, <laughs> I feel like. Uh, so if you want updates on DevTooly and when we are going to uh, deploy the final version, follow DevTooly on Twitter and follow me as well. Um, don't go on DevTooly right now because it's not the best. I'm not <laughs> really proud of it. And now everybody's going on DevTooly.com. Um, but um, yeah. I expect uh, updates from us uh, in the next probably one to two weeks. 
I want to say one week. Um, so stay tuned. That's it for me. Excellent. That was fantastic, Andrea. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so I just posted um, your Twitter um, in the meetup chat, but you are also available in the community Slack so people can reach out there to you as well. Um, I, there's a couple questions. Yeah. Um, one, um, so how are you, can you talk a little bit about how you're deciding what tools you want to include? Okay, so basically I'm going through all my bookmarks. You've seen on the second, I think it was the second slide or third, the mile long <laughs> list of bookmarks that I have. I already went through them, so I already tested them before. I already used them. That's my criteria. If I use them, first of all, so I have experience with them, but, but because basically I'm recommending them on the website. So I want people to know what they're using. Now just put whatever, okay, CSS, whatever, you know, tool I find. And then if people recommend tools to me, which people are doing already, and I hope they will do in the future, and that means that they have been tested already, uh, so people are aware of how they work and they like them. <laughs> and probably in the future, I will have featured uh, uh, tools, maybe paid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see how it goes. How things develop, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, and then another question, um, yeah. so what are some example um, project goals that you would set? Like when you're looking towards the future, are there some particular project goals you want to set for DevTooly or things you would like to see happen with it in the future? Yeah, as I said, I want to take it to a, um, a place where it generates revenue <laughs> of <Okay>. some sort. <laughs> uh, and honestly, I want people to love it and to be the place where they go, ah, okay, I have to find this, uh, I, I will probably find this tool there on DevTooly, uh, you know, I'm going there. Or people have it bookmarked. I'm actually planning to, to create a extension for Chrome. So they have it there and just uh, <laughs> click. That's awesome. That's <laughs> but until then, uh, they can just bookmark only that. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, thank you so much, Andrea. You. That was fantastic. Um, remember, you can find um, Andrea on her Twitter, and she is also in our community Slack. So thank you again. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. <laughs> I can't wait to see DevTooly live. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye.